It is 8th of November, 2012. Well, recently we just had a proposition in California, I should say, not pass. What it was was Proposition 37. 37 was, if you voted for it, was going to go into basically making sure that certain foods were labeled that they contain genetically modified organisms. It doesn't sound too bad. But however, the interesting part about it is more people voted against Prop 37 than obviously voted for it. Henceforth, Prop 37 did not pass. Ironically, just to give you a little side note, and I'll get to you why in a second, we did fund extra sales tax for education. Why? Obviously because we want our children to be more knowledgeable, which makes perfect sense. The more you know, the better off you are, which makes perfect sense, except in the state of California. Where we, us Californians, decided to basically that we did not want to know something. So ironically, which is kind of interesting, we actually voted not to know something. We do not want to know what necessarily is in our food, whether it's genetically modified or not. Now keep in mind, remember that we do not want to know, or whether we should know, because that's going to get to the part in a second. All right, well... We did not want to know if our food is genetically modified, which opens up a whole can of worms. Like for what? Well, let's say if I wanted to genetically modify my food, not just to resist, let's say, um, bugs or higher levels of pesticides or whatever it comes down to be. What if I wanted to genetically modify my food to, let's say, you make you feel better when you ate it? Elevate your serotonin levels. What if I wanted to genetically modify my food product? to make you more dependent on it. Let's say it will affect your dopamine levels, your reward mechanisms. What if I want to genetically modify my food to make sure you never feel full when you eat it? Or vice versa. We don't know. There may be some good intentions involved, but you'll never know. Uh, basically, I can do it. And the irony about it is you never have to know why you voted not to know, or I should say we voted not to know what is genetically modified in our foods or whether our foods are genetically modified. Now, we can still count on foods labeling not GMO, which is not a bad option, but the fact that you do not know what is genetically engineered in your food, whether it be medications being added to it, let's say for example some noble attempts in regards to vaccinated, carrying vaccinations in certain foods, in certain areas where needles and things like that may not be as readily available, uh, genetically modifying our food to maybe raise our vitamin A levels, or genetically modifying our food uh, to make you highly addicted to it. You don't know because you voted or we voted not to know. I guess it's supposed to make us a little happier. All right, now since we're on the ignorance is bliss line of reasoning, let's go to our next item, which ties in to not knowing or having a need to know. What it is is a little court case that came out of courthouse news, and I'm going to read it so that I don't get my butt sued. In regards to dexedrim, headline: Dexedrim evades suit over chromium. Now, dexedrim is really not the evil aspect here, but it will get down to what opens the door for evil. All right. A federal judge dismissed the claim against Dextrotrim. Someone had brought a claim against Dextrotrim saying that it contained an ingredient that was not on the label and could potentially be harmful. Now, this ingredient you may remember from, let's say, the Aaron Brockovich stories in regards to um, what power plants were kicking out as far as poisoning the wells and people getting sick, not being able to feel their hands or fingers, you know, Typical type toxic stuff which ends up usually in a very tragic consequence. But I guess what's not good enough for power plants is good enough for you to consume do whatever the court may deem acceptable. Alright, so the person is suing Dexatrim. And they say that Dexatrim contains this toxic ingredient. The toxic ingredient number one is chromium. Not to be confused with chromium bicolinate, chromium polynicotinate, chromium niacinamide, none of those food types of chromium. We're talking hexavalent chromium. Yes, evil hexavalent chromium. And this is what the defendants ruled upon. 
and the plaintiff could not prove. Since the plaintiff could not prove what level hexavalent chromium is harmful at, the plaintiff really couldn't assume harm because they don't know how much hexavalent chromium is required to really hurt you. But here's the kicker. This goes down to the Prop 37, the ostrich head in the sand thing. Why? Who cares what you know, what's in your food? I guess the less you know, the happier you are. I'm like, I suppose that could be healthy too. All right. What they said was actually kind of interesting. All right. The, the person suing the manufacturer Dextrum said she relied on the absence of hexavalent chromium in making her purchasing decision. All right. Obviously, uh, we thought if something's in the product, you've got to include it on the ingredients. So henceforth, if it's not in the ingredients, you're relying on the absence of that product, whether it be gluten or whatever it is, who knows. All right. Furthermore, this is how the defendant argued, which is interesting because it worked. So they're pretty darn good lawyers. All right. They said they argued, they argued at the motion hearing, and the plaintiff did not contest, probably because you didn't know what to say, that there is no regulation requiring the disclosure of hexavalent chromium on the ingredient list. That's like, huh? No regulation requiring the disclosure of hexavalent chromium on the ingredient list. Henceforth, since there's no regulation requiring a toxic element uh, be listed on your whatever you're taking, food, supplement, food, genetically modified organism that could potentially harm you. What an incredible element of case law that creates. You don't have to know. No, if someone's putting hexavalent chromium in your food, it's better that you don't know. And not even better, if it's part of what's harming you, and you can't prove at what level it hurts you, nope, no go. And again, just so you can validate the information yourself, you know, footnotes are a big thing with me. It's titled, Dexitrim Evades Suit Over Chromium Content. This was in San Francisco. U.S. District Judge Charles Breyer and the lead plaintiff, Joanne Arroyo, if I pronounced her name properly. And again, the judge ruled in favor of Dexitrim. And again, that's on a need-to-know basis. So, scary. All right. After that, we go to daily multivitamin use having no impact on cardiovascular disease. I got a kick out of this one. All right. Obviously, what do you think a multivitamin is? All right. Well, if we look at it technically, a multivitamin is one vitamin and another vitamin. Henceforth, two. Multi. Polyvitamin, whatever you want to call it. All right. So I can make, let's say, uh, gumball, add a little bit of vitamin B, and a little bit of vitamin C. Henceforth. My gumball is now a multivitamin. Why is that important? Well, basically, I think it was the data from the Physician's Health Study, the PH2, released in the Journal of American Medicine. All right. This was an incredible waste of time, and I'll tell you why. All right. The multivitamin that they utilized, it's not Pfizer's fault, but they used a Centrum. All right. Centrum Silver, which it's a noble intent to be looking after your health. All right. So... First, they're taking a multivitamin, that's proactive, that's a positive. However, there's a catch. When a multivitamin does not supply the RDA, recommended daily allowance of nutrients, why are nutrients important? Because without them, you die. All right, maybe not fast, but you die. So therefore, that's why we set a recommended daily allowance and also a minimum daily allowance. All right, so a centrum, albeit, is a multivitamin and it's decent in some of its levels. Many of its levels don't even reach, reach anywhere near the RDA, especially in its mineral contents more than anything else. And the reason I know it's the Pfizer is because in October, they found out people taking even this basic, basic uh, substandard multivitamin when it comes to RDAs still resulted with an 8% reduction in cancer over time. But what they should have been focusing on really more than anything else, is at least getting what's called a benchmark, something we can measure by. So they should have at least had these doctors taking something which supplied them 
at least a majority of the recommended daily allowance of their nutrients, 100%. That would have been nice. That would have given us a comparison. So, the dot that basically, if these guys would have woke up, looked and recruited somebody from any part of the industry, a nutritionist, a dietitian, anybody, better than just making a bunch of doctors which don't have necessarily nutritional training and trying to run a 10 to 15 year study on something they have no clue what it is. If they would have, they could have come up with a uh, study like this. All right, we'll take a group of doctors. We'll do still do a double line placebo, but we'll make sure that one of them gets 100% of the RDA. Maybe one group gets 50% of the RDA. Another group gets 200%, 300%, 400%, 500%, on and onward. Maybe even to the point where they can find the optimal level of nutrients to basically prevent many diseases, which we know are out there because we read the studies all the time, just not all together in a multivitamin. And they could have found out basically too, at uh, what level. Uh, I should say at what minimal level these nutrients set in to where you start re resulting in, if I can pronounce it properly, certain types of disease like deficiencies. Like for example, vitamin C, scurvy is like when you're at the, all the way at the end of it. Well, maybe if you're not, if you're only getting 60 milligrams of vitamin C, you may be 50% more susceptible to colds. Uh, 30 milligrams of vitamin C, you may be 75% more susceptible to colds. That's kind of interesting stuff to find out. Well. So what happens is, they come out with a study, daily multivitamin users really do not reduce any risk of major cardiovascular disease based upon a multivitamin, which might as well just be a gumball with a few nutrients thrown in. It's an inadequate, very poorly done study. Why? Because obviously whoever was doing this study really had very little respect for basically what nutrients are. And they should have recruited people that were involved in basically nutrition to begin with. I don't care where they got them, from what side of the aisle, get someone that actually did some research on this so they could at least have done a decent study to see what 100% of the RDA actually did prevent as far as disease. They did it back in the 50s and the 60s when they had better epidemiology, epidemiology reports, but obviously today, if you don't have respect for what you're studying, but yet you're getting government taxpayer funds, as I think it was from the National uh, Health Institute that was uh, supplying the money for this, taxpayers, you could at least do a, be a little respectful and do a better study. All right, guys, that's it. I did that today. So generally tomorrow, I can carry more of the nutrient stuff and things that could actually help as opposed to looking at um, a lot of these negative studies. Before I forget, this was the article from Pfizer who basically, yeah, get this reverse thing going. Those are the ones that lead, led me on to which multivitamin they were using. You can look at the centrums yourself. Again, I congratulate you for taking any multivitamin whatsoever. That proactive behavior is real important. But if you look at them, it's not going to give you a lot of your RDAs. And so you could be doing a box of total and be doing the same thing. Really disappointing study. The length of time, the number of people involved in it. They had a, could have done a lot better job with just a little bit of effort. Well, again... Thank you for listening. I will catch you tomorrow, the next day, when we do the positive stuff in regards to nutrition and pharmaceuticals. All right, guys, catch you in a bit this 8th of November, 2012.